Welcome, Gun Runner. everybody, Kieran aka The Laird here, and I'm back with another book review. Um, I've had quite a few of these recently, and um, I've still actually got a few more to come. I just seem to be inundated with uh, books to review at the moment, so uh, if you do like your retro gaming related books, there's going to be plenty um, to look out for um, on the channel um, in the next few weeks. But this one is one I was particularly excited about. I pre-ordered it quite a while back. And um, I was very excited when I heard the other day it had been dispatched. And uh, to say that I'm not disappointed um, would be a bit of an understatement. Um, because it's it's a pretty bloody fantastic thing, as you will see. But um, going to a bit, bit of background, um, Art of Atari, it was a few years ago now that it first started talking about. When the author, uh, Tim Lapatino... Um, appeared on a few of the forums and um, was talking about making this book. Um, a lot of changes um, went down over the years. A lot of different um, contacts were made. A lot of different people got involved in the book. Um, you see it's got a forward by Ernest Klein, who did uh, Ready Player One. Um, another afterword by Robert Conte. Um, it was also... Um, Fact checked and proofread, I believe, by Marty Goldberg, who did the um, amazing um, Atari history book. So there's been quite a few people involved in this. Um, not to mention all the people who got involved in the kind of uh, interview side and providing content. So first, I just want to show you something because one thing that a lot of people talked about um, when this book was announced was the high price. And uh, I remember thinking it's quite expensive, but I didn't mind because it's a niche product and uh, it was a subject matter that I'm very much interested in because everybody knows how much I love Atari and um, their artwork is iconic. But just take a look at this for one moment. That is how thick this hardback book is. I mean, that is pretty incredible. And um, now, actually, having thought about it, I don't think the book's expensive at all. I actually think it's incredibly good value for money. Um, for the size of the book you're getting. They did do a deluxe edition as well, which comes in like a, a box, which actually looks like an Atari cartridge, which looks very cool, but it's a hell of a lot more expensive. And um, I decided to stay with this edition because for what you get with the deluxe edition, I didn't really think it was worth it. I didn't really want to pay out more just for getting a, um, a, a fancy box, essentially. So... Um, Let's have a look. So you have to excuse um, this. This is going to be quite difficult to do because the book is so large that I was struggling to get it to fit on the desk in a place where one, the camera could see it and more importantly, that I could still reach it because obviously I can't flick through it if I can't reach it. And um, as it is, um, I'm at full reach with the camera literally right up against me. So um, that gives you an idea of actually how big, I suppose, the actual book is um, in size. Um, oh, I'll just try, I was just trying to uh, move it slightly and all I did was end up knocking it over. Um, since that's live TV for you, but obviously we're not live. But I, I don't usually edit these things out. Uh, so we start off with some lovely um, pictures of Atari 2600 games. Uh, lots of classics in there like Pole Position and Galaxian and Pac-Man and Berserk, etc. Space Invaders. So there we go. It's by Dynamite Books. Starts off with an iconic piece of artwork there, which is the cover for the Atari 2600 version of Pac-Man. And an index. So you can already see um, a lot of what's in here. There's stuff about E.T., stuff about Pac-Man. Some of the um, the artists, Terry Hoff, Hiro Kimura, James Kelly, Warren Chang. Um, lots of people in there um, who are involved. Forward by Ernest Klein. I love that image. Um, that was from a catalogue, I seem to remember. Yeah, it says their catalogue montage. I think I might have done that catalogue. Um, actually... Um, in another video because I did do a video um, looking at 
um, Atari 2600 um, catalogs that I have and the artwork in them. So actually what I will do is, um, since I'm talking about that now, I'll, I'll link that um, up here somewhere so you can um, take a look at that if you wish as well. So there's the introduction. Um, so it's got history in here. It's not really comprehensive. Don't expect to find the kind of history you got in the um, Atari book. Um, but it doesn't miss anything out. It covers all the important stuff. So if you don't already know the history of Atari, um, obviously the first um, game Pong, and uh, when they were still sort of using scissor genome as well, obviously Nolan Bushnell, uh, Ted Dabney, Al Alcorn, etc. So lots of pictures there. Quotes. So it starts as a nice early advert for the 2600, telling you that it's not a toy. Art and design. So it goes into the role of, of how important art was in those early days. And I, I do think that people shouldn't underestimate how important artwork was then. Because um, the thing is that back then, you didn't really have the media like you have now. Even in the early years, there wasn't even magazines that, sh that showed the games. And when those magazines did first come in, a lot of people remember that quite often they didn't even show uh, screenshots from the game. Sometimes you just literally got a description and perhaps a picture of the box. So those images that you saw in the box were all important because when you went into a store, um, back in those days, quite often you would choose a game purely um, by that imagery on the box. And uh, I mean, I can even, I can remember doing that, you know, even with, with later games, so the Spectrum and stuff, you know, just literally choosing a game in the box art. So that, you know, and a lot of people were like, you know, did that and sometimes you got disappointed but sometimes you didn't but it was a big 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 selling point an iconic advert there for atari video music incredible we've got some great arcade artwork there so george Operman, he's probably one of the most famous um atari artists who worked at the arcade division pinball division um, he did some pretty amazing stuff um, over the years. Um, I believe he actually designed the Atari logo as well, I seem to remember. So, uh, the, you know, the Fuji symbol. So, you know, if the, he has got to be the most important artist in the history of Atari. So, and there we go. You know, very few people have given as much of their life to a company as George gave to Atari. So that's a great quote there. Oh, and there we go. There's the story behind the Fuji. Um, I mean, what I will say is this book only arrived over the weekend and I had a fl quick flick through it. I didn't really get a chance to have a good look at it, good read it, because um, I was really keen to get this review out. So actually a lot of what we're doing in this video is also um, me seeing a lot of this for the first time too. So, but the small amount I did look at, as I say, I was incredibly impressed by and the, the more I see the more I'm impressed by because it's just such high quality. I love this advert for Gotcha um, because it's it's so famous this arcade game because it has these these controllers that look like boobs and obviously on the advert it's like he's grabbing her from behind and you can just think that he's going to grab her boobs as well. So there's some great there's a cabinet design there, um, some great Atari artwork, um, basketball gravatar. Dominoes, I don't remember seeing that one. Soccer, ping pong, grand track, avalanche, super breakout. Ultra tank down the bottom, I was trying to read that. Star Wars, food fight, amazing stuff there. Right, home cult cells, it's a nice mock up art of the 2600. And it goes into the design behind the, the, the earlier consoles, so we've got the 2600, 5200, 7800 there. Um, I'm a bit unsure why they chose to say 1986 for the uh, the 7800 because obviously 1984 was the original release and it was re-released in 86. But it seems a bit strange that they would use 86 when obviously 
84 is the kind of real release date. Um, there was the later ones, so the uh, Atari Corp consoles, I suppose you could call them, the XE game system for Lynx 1 and 2, and the uh, the Jaguar, Atari's last console. Dedicated consoles like video music, like uh, video pinball, stunt cycle, pong, etc. On box artwork. I mean, Atari Twenty Six Hundred box art is just is just um, so iconic. I mean, these images that they created. I mean, they're just just absolutely incredible. Um, really are really really of its time, but it still looks so great. I mean, you just don't see artwork like this in games anymore. I mean, look at that! How exciting that seemed from looking at it. I mean, it's a lot more exciting than the game that artwork. That's for sure. I love that image. Just another image from an Atari catalog. Um, really good. So Cl Cliff Spone, I assume you pronounce it. Um, sorry if I've got that wrong. So I love his artwork for Brain Games. I think that's fantastic. And use concept art for Breakout. I really like that. Never seen that before. That's wonderful. Ooh. <laughs> the moon match. That's really cool. This one's a great one. Uh, flag capture there um, with the Union Jack and the Pirates. And the game was nowhere near as exciting as that artwork. Another another perfect example of how much um, artwork could do. I mean, these this artwork. You know, this is what you'd imagine the game is being in your head. Um, but if it played out like that, was another matter, of course. But Maze Craze, I always like that one. Um, there's two different ones for that as well. Yeah, there we go. The Return of Artwork. I remember, I remember that there is two. Outlaw, that's some great artwork. Um, of course, that was one of um, David Crane's first games who would go on to do Pitfall. Slot posters in Space War. Superman, which I think was one of the first licensed games that... Um, if not the first, actually, that anyone did. I mean, yeah, first film licensed video game in history. I thought it was. Um, I was looking for that because I, I was trying to remember if it was. Um, and I thought, did think it was. And obviously they took a different approach with the artwork because of that. But the special edition, they've obviously used comic book artwork. So it's, it's, it's very different in its concept um, in many ways. Unused cover up Superman 3, which was sadly was never released. Although you can get the... Uh, it is possible to find the, the Atari 8-bit version of Superman 3 out there. Um, it's been sold by BNC, I think. That one's amazing, basic programming. How they got that artwork um, you know, for basic programming is pretty funny, really, because it, it, it's, it's, yeah, it couldn't be further from um, the reality in many ways. Oh, I love the grinning guy on Human Cannonball. That's a great bit of artwork. Mitch Golf, Skydiver, Slot Machine, Video Chess, Rick Gadici, I'm guessing. Six Atari, Golf, Dodgem, oh, I always like the Dodgem one. Uh, the Dodgem one really reminds me of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. I'm guessing that was his inspiration because. Uh, it reminds me of that a lot. Pele Soccer. Which is the first game to license a sports personality. So there we go. Space Invaders. I love this one. Video checkers. With the, the, the king there looking all smug. Uh, I think that's a great piece of artwork. I've always l absolutely loved that one. Demons to Diamonds. Video Pinball. Susan Jekyll. Asteroids. Uh, great piece of artwork. It's been reused so many times down the years. I think that's got to be one of the most reused pieces of um, Atari artwork, actually. Because um, it was used on a lot of later versions of Asteroids and stuff as well. 
really iconic piece of artwork. Another, I think, great piece of artwork that really captures the um, the game incredibly well. And this whole command there really does capture the game perfectly. I think they did a they did a superb job with that one. And the alternative artwork for fifty two hundred version. And there's the uh, the famous um, Warlords artwork as well. It says they're Games of Thrones. You can actually see that. Um, that's really cool. Steve Hendricks, and this early version of the Haunted House artwork there, by the looks of things. Uh, Berserk. That's a really nice piece of art, isn't it? And the... Uh, 5200 version. I do like they were designing different covers for the 5200 versions of the games. Uh, Centipede. I love all of Centipede's artwork. I think it's all fantastic. Um, it's some of my, my favourite artwork out there, especially the arcade um, version. Um, I love the side art for the arcade version. It's brilliant. I was never keen on that one, though. Um, that's from the Atari 8-bit version. I was never keen on that artwork. Um, I didn't feel it fitted that well. Combat 2, which never went released. Great bit of artwork for Defender. Um, I think they captured things um, really well there. Uh, more great artwork for Defender. E.T., of course. It wouldn't be an Atari book without E.T. in it. And stuff about the E.T. dig, um, which I like to think that everybody knows everything about now. Um, Haunted House. Lovely artwork. Um, do love Haunted House stuff. Frog Pond. Guessing that was never released because I've never heard of it. F Grand Prix. And the great artwork for Pac-Man. Um, I remember seeing there's the two versions. There's this one and this one. Um, that one is it is obviously far superior. This one was a bit weird having the Pac-Man like that. But... Um, the ghosts kind of sticking out. I was sort of strange. That one is just brilliant. That's an iconic, amazing piece of artwork. And one thing that was cracked me up about this was the way they specifically done it for the 2600 version because Pac-Man has got these long um, like tabs. They almost look like Wrigley's extra chewing gum, I always thought, um, rather than obviously the round pills of the arcade game. So I really like the way they specifically designed that around the, the, the 2600 version. And that was some weird Pac-Man artwork. That was that, um, there was some on the early early um, versions for the the eight bit. There was some really weird artwork like this one. This is the one I was thinking of, um, where he's got legs and stuff. Um, very very strange indeed. Fifty two hundred version. That one's funny down there. He looks like he's stoned or something. I'm guessing that's why they didn't use it. Lots of stuff for Pac-Man. Um, obviously, it's pretty important. Great piece of artwork there for Kicks. Phoenix, look at that. Fantastic. I love Phoenix. One of my favourite 2600 games, without doubt. And there's an unused bit of artwork for Phoenix. Equally as good. Raiders of the Lost Ark. I remember reading that, um, although you can see it's Indiana Jones, if you actually look closely, it doesn't look like Harrison Ford. And that's because they weren't actually allowed to use his likeness, which I always thought was quite funny. But you can clearly tell it's him. Real Sports Baseball. There's the Real Sports logo. Real Sports Basketball, which was never released. Real Sports Football. Real Sports Volleyball. Always liked that game. I bought that um, when I was a kid. I really enjoyed it. I love the way the background changed, especially on, um, on Real Sports Volleyball. I always thought it was a really good game. Star Raiders. Great artwork. And that, that is the amazing piece of artwork from the, um, the Atari 8-bit version of Star Raiders. Um, absolutely stunning, stunning piece of artwork that is. Submarine Commander and Tempest. There's some great artwork for Tempest. It's another one that I think is one of my, my favourites when it comes to Atari art. It's actually... Uh, the Tempest arcade game. Super Breakout, there we go, Vanguard. The Old Revenge, another very memorable one. Terry Hoff. 
He did Battle Zone. That's a nice piece of artwork. I always like that that, that Battle Zone one. He did the Sesame Street games, Crazy Climber, um, which sadly uh, was never released. The thing about that is strange because on the flashback, the new version of the flashback, they've got Crazy Climber. And they promote it on the front of the box as Atari Climber. It really irks me because what they've done is they've mocked up a silver box, which I'm assuming that would have been. But where there should be a picture, they've just used a really bad screenshot of the game. which It just looks terrible. Why did they not use that artwork and mock up a box properly? Stupid. Stupid. Don't get it. But there we go. This would be a great piece of artwork like that. Hiro Kimura. Some great images here. And that one, um, that's another one of my favourites, um, by Judy Richter there, Crystal Castles. Superb, superb artwork. Lovely artwork for Crystal Castles. And I always thought Bentley Bear was a character they should have exploited more. And uh, do one thing that I, I think is really cool that some people might have not noticed when you look at this piece of artwork is the way it's drawn. Obviously, it's, it's an isometric game, Crystal Castles. Um, that's the isometric 3D effect. And... They've almost tried to produce that with these angular lines in the um, in the art, and I think that's very very clever. And he drew that great bit of uh, dig dug artwork there by Gus Allen. I do like the way they've got all the mock up um, screen displays as well, showing you how they design the graphics. It's not just about the box art. Donkey Kong Junior. Jigs of Hazard, which sadly was never released, which is a shame because I loved Jigs of Hazard when I was a kid, one of my favourite TV programmes. Uh, some great artwork for Galaxian. More great artwork for Joust. Played that as a lot as a kid with my brother. Lovely Jungle Hunt. Kangaroo, Krull. Mario Brothers. It was on an Atari well before it was on any Nintendo system. Moon Patrol. It's getting harder to, 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 to do it now because um getting nearer to the end of the book. Um, but you can see, you know, we've already been looking at this for over 20 minutes. It's, it's, a, it's a big old book. Loads of great artwork out there from Mr. Pac-Man. Um, full of personality. Fantastic stuff. Pole Position. And that artwork there, um, they actually reused the Sprint Master as well. I seem to remember they just reversed it, flipped it and changed a couple of colours or something. But Atari Corp are a bit lazy like that. They reused the Star, Star Raiders artwork for Solaris as well. James Kelly here. Real Sports Soccer. Real Sports Tennis. First is an artwork for Rubik's Cube. Snoopy and the Red Baron, Sources Apprentice, Sword Quest games. I'm guessing he did all of those. Great stuff showing the rewards that no one ever won. They never released the last game. Sword Quest Waterworld, Sword Quest Airworld. Lovely artwork. Warren Chang, who designed the. Um, I, think he, I believe he designed the 2600 Junior and the 7800, I seem to remember. Taz, track and field. Ah, oh, nice artwork there for Choplifter. Really do like that piece of artwork. Gravitar. Lovely memo there, commenting on uh, what they thought of, of, of certain artwork. Gremlins. Lovely millipede artwork there, fantastic. Junior Pac-Man. Pingo! Which I was writing about only yesterday. I know I love the 2600 port Pingo, it's fantastic. Stargate Midnight Magic. Mark Erickson. And there's the uh, Atari version of Tetris, the artwork for that. Crossbone Food Fight. I love the Food Fight artwork, it's great. Gallagher. Dark Chambers there. Nice piece of artwork. Curry Warriors. Fatal Run. 
clax. Industrial design, so um, how they did the cabinets and, and the computers and stuff like that. So there we go, looking at how they did the 2600 and the, the joystick, the iconic CX40. Here's the, um, I've missed out here, 5200, because it's flipped ahead. 400 and 800. All really iconic looking hardware. Um, video music, making things the analog way. Um, no Photoshop or PCs back then. So it shows drafting up a, a 2800 box there. Rinsetto. Prototypes, so lots of great stuff here that didn't get released. So alternative packaging. Uh, Space Invaders handheld that they never released despite advertising it. So in the breakout one. I don't think any of those ever got released. Um, even though they were heavily advertised because they were worried that they would take sales away from the um, 2600. Tank 2 console. That's the Atari with remote, remote controls at 2700. 3200. Which um, in the System X, which will eventually become the uh, 5200. There's the um, voice controller, which design they reused for the 2600 Junior, of course. Cosmos, which was sadly never released despite um, a load going into production. Um, again, because Satori was stupid and were worried that it would it would um, take sales away from the um, the twenty six hundred, which is a shame. The key games twenty six hundred. You can't imagine owning a console that garish, can you? It's quite funny that really. The Provision that allowed you to store your stuff in one handy wheel or wheel around cabinet. The Jaguar VR. Good to see that in there. Look at that iconic image of them all in the uh, Atari jackets there. Great stuff. Sorry if I've um, not got to see um, the book well enough as I get, I get towards the end because it's getting more difficult to, to, to hold it up and film it and get it in the right place. Um, more great adverts. But then... You want to be buying this book to have a look at it for yourself anyway, because I'm sure you can already see um, just how blooming fantastic this is um, in terms of the content. I mean, it, it's got everything in there. I mean, everything. I mean, there's a classic um, promotional shot for the Jaguar of a kid playing Cybermorph in his room with a Atari cap on and Sunnyvale number plate up the top. And you can see a Lynx up the top on the shelf there as well. Um, Absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant there. There's the after forward and uh, acknowledgements a bit about the author uh, and the credits and the index and that. Then it finishes off with more great um, Atari 2600 screenshots. So that's that's the book really. Um, not what else I can say. I think I think you've you've quite clearly seen um, what a quality quality product it is and. And yeah, um, there isn't really any criticisms I can level at it whatsoever. It's so all-inclusive. It's got everything in there. I think, um, I mean, obviously its focus is more on the early years um, rather than the Atari Corp years. And uh, it would be kind of cool if they did a, a follow-up that, that looked a bit of uh, the later years. But obviously this is going through really when Atari was still all one company. And that does include a few odd bits like some Jaguar um, obviously adverts and stuff in there. I do particularly like the um, Atari Lynx boxes. So I would have um, perhaps liked to have seen some stuff on them. But, you know, the book is already massive. There really isn't uh, much more you would have wanted to get in there and, and, and made it even bigger. I mean, it goes through the iconic years of, of the um, original Atari when they were still one company, showing the artwork, you know, for the arcade games on the 2600 and... 5200 because obviously, obviously it's the same artist working on a lot of that but maybe one day they'll do a, a follow-up book uh, and look at some later stuff like the uh, 
the Lynx Art and uh, Jaguar, etc. Um, you never know, you never know. Um, but still, um, I don't want to um, bash it just for not having that in there because this, this is an absolutely stunning, stunning book and uh, one that I think every um, Atari fan out there should be purchasing already, um, should have purchased already, should I say. And uh, if you were a fan of, of, of gaming art in general, then uh, this is a book that should be the top of your Christmas list. It really is a absolutely um, fantastic book. Um, there's really so much in there to look at. Um, you could be sitting there for a long time uh, going through it all. So as always, I'll stick a link below um, of, of um, where you can find out more and buy it. And I do believe, I mean, I got my copy from Amazon, so I do believe that that is, that is the main selling point um, for this book. So um, just head on over there um, and order it. I mean, also I should mention as well, my, my book, I, after it was announced it was dispatched it came really quickly I was slightly worried being in the UK that maybe I'd have to I'd have to wait a while with it thought it might be shipped from America or some such but no nope, it was shipped super quick so um, yeah uh, nothing to worry about there either so yeah I, I can't recommend this book highly enough and um, I suggest that, that pretty much anyone who's a fan of, of video game art in general uh, goes out and, and, and purchases this, this, this as soon as possible so thank you for watching, um, give us a like, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, let me know what you think of the book below, and I'll see you all again with another review very soon. Thanks for watching, bye bye.